It's time for another round of live, local, play-by-play -play coverage of Southwest Metro Sports on PSB Media. Taken away by Spinner, potential shorthanded opportunity. Here comes Steven Spinner, the captain. Shot. Oh! oh! Great blocks in front of him, just waits for him to develop, breaks an arm tackle, and he'll dive for the end zone. Watch the teamwork, tradition, and all-out competition unfold live on any streaming device. Annie with it, gives off for Zulstar through traffic. Here's an opportunity, score! Oh boy. PSB Media's coverage of tonight's game is brought to you by The Malt Store, Umbria Gourmet Pizzeria, Athlete PT, Noodles & Company of Eden Prairie, the Sun Current, the Tavern on 4 and 5, and in partnership with Minnesota Football Magazine, the Pioneer Press, and BEC TV. And it drops! The game is over! Forest Lake wins 1-0 in the bottom of the 10. Brett Gravel is the hero. Catch all of the action all season long on your home for Southwest Metro Sports. PSB Media. Brady Stu up from his defense. We'll leave it for Graham. Graham works his way and scores in overtime. Michael Graham with the game. Game time is coming up next. And welcome into PSB Media as we're live for non-conference matchup here from the Eden Prairie Community Center as we have the Blaine Bengals against the Eden Prairie Eagles right here on PSP. Good evening, my name is Brett Johnson, joined alongside by Kevin Hagstrom as we have kind of an in-between tournament game here for your Eden Prairie boys hockey team before they get to the Schwann Cup. Coming up next week, Blaine also will have a tournament coming up next week as well, so both teams kind of using this as a tune-up their respective tourneys. Here's Blaine working their way into the zone. Eden Prairie able to bank it out. Mark Sullivan playing up at forward today, centering the second line. will pass it over to Argetsinger on the right wing. His shot will go wide. Now Blaine will have it from the corner. Held in by Nolan Sullivan. Angles from their own zone. will pass it up left side. Go across where it's picked off by Sullivan. Aguilar to dump it back in. Very strong Blaine squad that has won 20 games in eight of their last nine years, but this season a little bit down as they're just one game of 500, trying to rebuild after losing a very strong senior class from last season. John Callistad, by the way, will get the starting goal for Blaine. He is uh, has a 3.14 goals against average and 9.05 save percentage so far on the season. He's played in four games. Ridge Garads played in the other half of the games for Blaine so far. Here's Eden Prairie into the zone, leaving it for Casey Middlestad. His wrist shot goes wide, and it will trickle outside the zone where Lieberman will gain possession. Lieberman overshoots Middlestad, and Eden Prairie will ice the puck to start the game here with 15.27 left. And getting a look at Eden Prairie's starting netminder, uh, that will be... Uh, starting in goal, Sean DeRocher, their usual starter, who on the season 5-2 and two, with a 2.26 goals against average, 9.14 save percentage. He took the loss against Edina in the championship of the Edina Holiday Classic on Saturday night. Hornets won that game, of course, 4-3 in overtime. Well, you could argue two of those goals really weren't DeRocher's fault. The first Edina goal took a weird deflection. And the overtime winner, not necessarily sure if the goal was scored before the net moved. Couldn't really tell from our replay. Here's Pizan. Now along the near side boards. Going to go outside the zone, and Louis Rail to pick it up for Eden Prairie. A couple of scratches for the Eagles on the roster tonight. No Brett Boldenow, and also no Cole Lawrence, two of their second-line players. They've kind of had to mix and match on that second line with Nolan Sullivan at left wing, Mark Sullivan at center, and Riley Argetsinger at right wing. Tyler Safran back up on the first line with Middlestad and Graham. He had started the season on that first line before Sullivan had played the last four games with the first unit for the Eden Prairie Eagles. Left the Durants, won by Eden Prairie. Lieberman to dump it in. Target singer from the right wing. Gets checked up into the board. Sullivan there in support. 
Sullivan will feed it to the point of Brady Shue. Try to find Nolan Sullivan in the slot. Now Blaine will take over. I don't believe Blaine has a shot on goal yet as time of possession battle has been won this far by Eden Prairie early in this game. Here's Brady Shue behind the net. Brady Shue had turned it over. Now a wraparound attempt for Rocher. Has to make a tough first save of the game as the Bengals look to get some offense going. From behind the net, that's Brodzinski. Very familiar name to college hockey fans. The Gophers, of course, have a Brodzinski on their team. Picked off at center ice by Shu. He then lost it. And now it's Lieberman. Nick Lieberman will saucer that outside the zone. And it will not trickle far enough as icing is waved off. Max Mortensen up along the near side. Towards the bench it goes. It's Ryan McCarthy. Dumped in. And from the corner, they center it in front. Don't get a clean shot on goal as DeRocher has to make a save with 13.25 left. We're scoreless from the Eden Prairie Community Center. It's a nice little combination try there by Blaine, but not getting a clean stick on the shot right out in the slot allowed DeRocher to cover it up easily. And off the draw, gets pushed behind the net. Eden Prairie from the corner. We'll overshoot Middlestad on that pass. And it will trickle all the way through to the goaltender. Again, John Callistad as he'll cover it up for a faceoff. Thanks for tuning into our broadcast this evening. Last time you'll hear from Kevin and I for a while here on an EP Boys broadcast. Next week during the Schwann Cup, we'll be linking to the Schwann Cup feed on our website. Then after that tournament, the Eagles will go up to the Iron Range to take on Cloquet and Duluth East. Uh, we unfortunately will not be joining Eden Prairie on that road trip, but we hope to uh, pick up uh, the Cloquet broadcast that we can put on our website. Through some traffic, making the save as Calistad. So next Eden Prairie broadcast that Kevin and I will announce, don't believe, is until the middle of January. So... Get your fix of us while you can. Yeah, we'll miss you. Yeah. <laughs> or people who don't like us will say it's a breath of fresh <laughs> air with a Schwann Cup and Cloquet broadcast. Yeah, perhaps. Again, well, you can still go to psbmn.com to find those games. We'll either have links to the games or have them embedded on our website. Hunter Johannes, who's centering the third line tonight, will try to dig it out for Eden Prairie. Up along the advertising, back in the corner, centered by Hastings. And now Blaine plays it out to the right side to Grant Bogey. Bogey will get slammed into the boards. Bogey having a decent season so far with a couple assists. Taken away by Eden Prairie's Matthew Hastings. Hastings dumps it in as the Eagles are off on a change. Try to fight through a check to chase down his own dump as they switch defensemen. Tripped up behind the net. Hastings puts himself in good possession to at least help his team maintain the puck. Will feed up to the point to Brady Shoe. And they get a tip in front. Pizon trying to dig it out. It's pushed and shoved. Had a pretty good chance at that rebound, but Callistad there to cover it up for the Bengals. Nice little positioning there by Alex Pizan looking for his second goal of the season. Calistad did a nice job staying level with him and uh, kind of getting his stick in there to hack a bit and prevent Pizan from making a clean swing. Lieberman, oh, faked a slap shot and then got a sneaky little pass down to Casey Middlestad. It's one of the better fakes I've seen. Wound it up like he was going to take a big slapper, then fed Middlestad down there at the bottom of the circle. Get you another look at that one here on the replay. And Middlestad actually got part of the pipe on that shot from the odd angle. It doesn't really seem to matter which angle, especially Middlestad and Graham take shots from. They can score. The steepest of angles must be very good pool players how to match you as well. <laughs> Got to make it pool style and call your shot. Yeah. <laughs> Upper corner, glove side. Five hole. Centered in front. Speaking of which, and there's a Blaine goal. 
They got it in front. I think Lincoln Ernie will get credit for the goal. Or Earn, I should say. And Blaine's up 1-0. After Eden Prairie put on the majority of the pressure early in the game, it's the Blaine Bengals striking first. That was a quick little bang, bang right in front of the net. And Rocher this time caught off guard. We saw that same sort of 1-2 action out in front. And the player moments ago fanned on it. And here, Blaine finally able to capitalize with that guy streaking through the crease. And scoring Actually switched that. It was Ryan Tufty getting the goal for Blaine, the University of Minnesota Duluth recruit. Interesting matchup between Tufty and Michael Graham in this game as they'll both be teammates at UMD. Goes through the stick of Aguilar and almost trickled through to a Blaine player for a clean shot. Important game here for the Eagles as the games after the Edina Holiday Classic have not been kind to Eden Prairie. They've been beaten by Edina in that tournament the last three years in their bounce back games. They're 0-3. Trying to reverse that trend here in this one. Lieberman passes it over to Safran as he's able to clear the zone. And now here comes the captain, Michael Graham. Good defense play, though, as he's checked off the puck by Blommer. That'll be dumped in and hit the netting with 10-16. Blaine with an early 1-0 lead here on PSB. I'd like to email us here during the game. We're at announcers at PSBMN.com. Announcers at PSBMN.com. Let us know where you're watching or listening from, who you're cheering for, and maybe some predictions on the game. Maybe you have a pick on who your player of the game will be. There's Nick Lieberman, the high slot. His ice level shot is steered away by Kalistad. Lieberman to tip it back in. Now Blaine will have to regroup. Off the advertising, they get it out to center ice, but it's dumped right back in by Tyler Safgren. Kind of a slow developing line change there for Aiden Very Graham to put the pressure back on. Puck is loose, lost track of it for just a minute. Normally he's all over those types of plays. Now held in by Louis Rail. Rail paired with Andy Aguilar in tonight's game. Nick Lieberman and Brady Shue as we get a whistle. And it looks like Blaine will pick up a penalty as Alex Penn will head to the box and Eden Prairie will go on the power play. It's a hard check just away from the puck, finishing off that check into the body of Louis Rail and uh, as you just said it, Alex Penn penalized for that one. Eden Prairie's been pretty strong on the power play, converting near 40%, I think 37.5% coming into tonight. You are correct, very good power play unit they've had so far this season. 10 out of 27, which is, of course, that 37% percentage. And so far, got to find a way to maintain possession. Well, actually, I lied. They sent an Eden Prairie player to the box. So we're uh, going to remain five on five. Didn't even know they sent a player in. I don't know if you caught a hit after the whistle or anything, Kevin. I didn't see anything yeah. that Eden Prairie did after the fact. Well, here's Mark Sullivan. Good drop pass to Nick Lieberman, but can't get a lot on that shot as he was bothered by Tanner Pesco. I wouldn't have mentioned the power play numbers if I did. Yeah. Well, you at least know the power play numbers now. <laughs> yeah. I was about to make the comment, boy, Eden Perry's not putting a lot, of, a lot of pressure for being on the power play. Then I look over and see a guy in the box. Loose out in the front. Blaine able to clear it away from trouble. And will be dumped in the zone by Mason Landberg. And on the season has no points. Actually looking at Blaine's third line, none of them have any points on the season. They really relied heavily on that first line of Alex Penn, Jesse Slauson, and also Easton Brodzinski. I know in a game earlier against Centennial this season, uh, that first line was actually suspended for the first period due to a fight they had with Maple Grove. So after trailing by four goals, that first line came back for the second period and scored five goals as they went on to beat Centennial. So quite a turnaround for them. And Shows how important those first liners are to this Blaine Bengals squad. Tip 
right back out to center ice. Here's Casey Middlestad working around to Blaine Check. And he can't chase down that puck as Tufty is able to poke it away and into a scrum in the corner. Here's Safran trying to work through a check. Middlestad over to Graham on the weak side. Graham takes a shot, takes a tip on the way, but it gets caught on the skates of Safran. Lieberman at the point. His shot blocked off the skate of Austin Johnson. More than halfway through first period, Blaine leads 1-0. An even strength goal by Ryan Tufty. And that was his fourth goal of the season. Now has 11 points, says the Bulldog recruit. Just a junior as well, along with Michael Graham, so you would think those two probably going to go to UND in the same class, depending on if they play a couple of years over in the USHL when they graduate. At least that's the hope for both Lee Smith and the Blaine coach, that they both graduated. Don't leave early. And now Blaine will dump it in. Here's Andy Aguilar. If precedent has anything to do with it, he'll stick around. Yeah. He, guys like Snuggerud and Spinner stuck around. Yeah. I was going to say, that's a very touchy subject for a lot of coaches. But, uh, yeah, Coach Lee Smith has had some success with Snuggerud and Spinner last year and also other notable players that stuck around for their senior years. Kyle Rao, Nick Letty. Dumped in by Andy Aguilar. And Aguilar just able to get a stick on that as they were looking the outlet pass to Brodzinski. Brodzinski centers it in front, takes a rebound, and Blades up 2 to nothing. John DeRocher giving up some juicy ones, uh, juicy rebounds, I should say. And Blaine capitalizes to go up by two. It's a happy Gilmore just tap it in. That's yeah. <laughs> how wide open yeah. it was on the back side. Again, great execution there by Blaine, having a couple guys swarming the net. And as you mentioned, with DeRocher giving up those rebounds out in front, a place to have those bangles and uh, able to capitalize, make it 2 nothing. That's Doug Montgomery scoring for Blaine. And what's important about that goal for, uh, for Alex Swanson, I should say, getting my number incorrectly. I knew it was a 36. Alex Penn, that is his third goal of the season. Well, Eden Ferry has to dig themselves out of an early hole here in Blaine. Slot, that shot blocked. And now a hit into the boards. Blaine works their way into the Eden Prairie zone. And the puck will be iced for a face-off back in the Eden Prairie zone. Let's see if we have anything in our email box so far. Again, we're announcers at PSBMN.com for tonight's game. Also, follow us on Twitter. We're at PSBMN on Twitter. So easy enough to remember. Played behind the net. It's Michael Graham backhanding it over to Casey Middlestad. Safran can't receive the pass cleanly as he backs into Tanner Feshko. Trying to hold it in, and it'll actually get popped into the bench. With 4.59 left here in the first period. So, again with Eden Prairie 0-3 in these bounce-back games after the Edina Holiday Classic. You have to wonder if they just kind of get emotionally spent after those games. It's a lot of hockey, yeah. three straight mm -hmm. nights, a lot of late nights as well. Very emotional games, too, because you know, a lot of players think that that Edina game is probably bigger than the two Lake Conference matchups they'll have against the Hornets later this season. Of course, when you lose in overtime, you can definitely spend a lot of not only physical energy, but emotional energy. Aguilar at the blue line takes a shot through traffic, hit a body in front. They try to center it, but nobody there but Bengal players. That was Blaine, two on two, but they'll overshoot Austin Johnson on that pass. Andy Aguilar from the corner. The Safran lost it in the skates, held in by Noterman. Noterman tries a one-timer to Tufty, takes a carom off the end wall, but 
Fortunately for Eagle fans, that was Aguilar there to get it outside the zone. Louis Rail out at center ice. And feed Argusinger. And it seems like since Blaine scored those two goals, the Eagles not quite as sharp. They had a pretty good first two or three minutes of this game, but kind of seemed to be in a funk and kind of out of sorts here over the last eight minutes or so. Well, Blaine's been doing a nice job putting pressure on this blue line of the Eagles. And a couple, again, we've mentioned a couple of scratches in the game. Uh, could be impacting the line play, especially at the blue line. But credit to Blaine for, again, keeping the pressure on and kind of making the Eagles play off the backs of their skates. Yeah, again, the scratches are bold and out with Lawrence. Well, even though those are both forwards and you think, well, that can't affect the blue line that much. It did affect it in the sense that it forced Lee Smith to move Mark Sullivan up to center. Sullivan had been a very steady defenseman this season for the Eagles, and I believe it's been about two years since he's played forward. I know he played some forward back in his sophomore year, but I believe he was spent his entire junior year as a defenseman. That's also an adjustment for him. From the dot, there's an odd angle shot. That one actually glided off the post and went wide. And now here comes Mark Sullivan. Sullivan to leave it for Nolan Sullivan. Here's Nolan Sullivan on his backhand. Weak shot turned away by Callistad. Back in neutral, Aguilar will pass it over to Louis Rail. Rail turns it over. Here's an opportunity for Blaine to good recovery. And now it's Hunter Johannes. Johannes to Hastings with a burst of speed. Hastings to Campbell's behind the net, tries to center it, but again, nobody there but Blaine players. Eden Prairie having some trouble getting teammates in the slot. They've tried a couple of those centering passes, but nobody's been home. As we'll get a whistle here with 2.57 left. Again, it just comes back down to this uh, Blaine quickness we've seen so far offensively and getting back in their back check defensively. Eden Prairie... Be a half step behind so far. A lot can change. Both these teams very dynamic offensively, averaging over four goals per game. So certainly not out of it yet, but it's been a little bit of a rough go in the first period. Around the end wall. We'll try to dig it out of the corner. Blade gets it up the near side and held in by Aguilar. They'll flutter a shot towards the goal. That goes wide. And now Johannes to backhand it. They'll turn it over, though. And now Blaine's out at neutral, two on two. Bogey gets checked off the puck. Now Pizan spins around. Pizan at the half ball, up ahead to Johannes. Johannes will just dump it into the zone as Hastings not able to gather up the puck. Hastings gets it back. Now passes it to the right to Grant. Shot from the circle, ice level. Turned away by Kalistad. Early whistle as he did give up a rebound, but... Looked like it was going to be a Blaine player there to swat it away anyways. You're mentioning the emotional drain and physical drain of that tournament, but also you know, got to figure out the uh, academic side as well. Generally, right before Christmas break, I'd always have some sort of test, you know, so maybe some of the kids had that uh, aspect to lament as well. That's a very good point because Thursday night, there was almost no student section as Blaine's up 3 nothing. A shot from the slot going low. Stick side on Shonda Rocher. And Blaine is up 3 to nothing here in the first period and a bit of a stunner at the community center. Another quick set of passes. Just caught this back check off guard. DeRocher had no chance. Beautiful Barry on the, uh, looked like right above the right pad below the right blocker. So Blaine up three to nothing. As Luke Noterman will score the goal. And for him, and that's his 10th goal of the season. And this is important for Blaine because they've gotten two of their three goals from their second line. Again, talking about how much they do rely on that first unit. Now loose in front, Blaine looking for more. Still the pressure put on as they'll stick handle it to the corner. Tufty, and threat a pass through. Now it's caught up along the far side. Now go across to Casey Middlestad. Middlestad to backhand it into the zone. Where it'll be picked up by Jordan Turnquist. 
Wayne has just turned things on here over the past 10 minutes or so. Now Argensinger, his drop pass intercepted by the Bengals. Wayne will dump it in. Had a chance at a two-on-two -two rush. It's Swanson. Now Mark Sullivan. His pass picked off. As now it'll be Aguilar with 42 seconds. Blade up 3-0 here in the first. And Nolan Sullivan will deflect that into the zone, but he was standing behind the center red line, so it will be icing. Maybe a bit of a mental error there by the standout sophomore. And off the faceoff, it gets pushed towards the end wall. Blaine with it behind the net. It's Mark Sullivan. Sullivan off the half wall. He gets it outside the zone. Chased down by Nolan Sullivan with a burst of speed. Takes a backhander from an odd angle. But Calistad in good position to make that save. Look at the replay. It's one of the better scoring chances Eden Prairie's had in this game. He's not had a lot of good opportunities. Blaine's been pretty solid defensively, showing some good team speed. Not allowed any, I don't think they've allowed any odd man rushes for Eden Prairie that I can remember. Not that I can recall yeah. either. Can't even recall many even man rushes either. It's been that kind of game for Eden Prairie where they've had to do a lot of dumping and chasing as Blaine definitely winning the hustle battle in this game as that'll be shot up into the crowd with four tenths of a second left. Got a couple of the Blaine JV players <laughs> off guard. They were looking down at their phones and startled them a little well, bit. That's what you get when you're a high schooler <laughs> looking at your phone. Yeah, especially in the first couple of rows. Back when we were at school, we'd, uh, I at least had a teacher that would slam a book on a table when a kid fell asleep. Oh, really? Yeah. Kids or would fall asleep up. in class? Well, dozing up, not necessarily completely yeah, fall asleep. I won't name who it is since <laughs> that was an Eden Prairie teacher. Oh. It was not Lee Smith, though, I will say that. Since he is a teacher in the district. But I'm sure he will have plenty to say here uh, during the first intermission to try to see if they can get some more energy out of their squad. We'll take a timeout and have a first period recap on the way next right here on PSBMN.com. Food and great sports. It's the Tavern on 4 and 5 in Eden Prairie. This season, the Tavern on 4 and 5 will be showing PSB broadcasts of Eden Prairie football and hockey on their big screen TVs. So make it a night out. Get some great food while watching your Eden Prairie Eagles at the Tavern on 4 and 5. Some of their classics include the Mediterranean Pizza, Tavern Turkey Burger, as well as delicious breakfasts that are served seven days a week. That's the Tavern on 4 and 5, just blocks from Eden Prairie High School. During this break in the action, I'd like to thank you for watching and ask for your assistance. In addition to live streaming games like this one, PSB Media also produces video commercials for clients. If someone you know is trying to grow their business, tell them to consider contacting production at PSBMN.com. The Internet is a powerful marketing tool, but due to its size it can be difficult for messages to reach the right ears. Optimize their valuable time and money. PSB Video will help drive localized traffic to the client's website. Using keyword-driven content, PSB Video can improve where businesses appear in search results. 
Nearer to the top results means more clicks and more business. So please tell those business owners you know to work smarter, not harder, by considering PSB Production. Find out more by emailing production at psbmn.com. I wish it was spring. Hello, Carl. Whoa, who are you? I'm the Malt Store Genie. Well, your entrance music makes you sound like an alien. We Malt Store Genies survive on grass and compost, not snow and ice. If you're a genie, where's your lamp? Malt Store Genies live... Never mind you. Let's get to the point. You had a wish for me, Carl. Yeah, I wished it would be spring. Your wish is my command. Sweet! This is much better! Wow, my lawn looks great, too. Indeed, Carl. That's the power of the Mulch Store genius. Thanks. Tell your friends of my mulching power. The Mulch Store. Granting beautiful lawn and landscaping wishes since 2000. Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Stay current on what's going on in your local community. The Sun Current is a local community newspaper that serves several communities in the Southwest Metro, including Eden Prairie, Edina, and Bloomington. The Sun Current will keep you up to date with the latest comings and goings on your school board, city council, arts and entertainment, and community events. And make sure you check out their in-depth high school sports coverage featuring weekly articles on Eden Prairie, Edina, Jefferson, and Kennedy. From football and hockey to tennis and swimming, the Sun Current has your favorite team covered. Keep it local and visit the Sun Current website at current.mnsun.com. Woohoo! This is the best dirt bath ever! Larry, what's with all that racket? I'm loving my new digs! This compost is amazing! Come on in, give it a try! What are you talking about? Oh yeah, you weren't kidding, Larry. This stuff is great! The Mulch Store has compost your garden, and yes, even the worms will love. Stop by any of the Mulch Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee to pick up the best compost in the Midwest. Online at mulchstoremn.com. Also shop rocks, seed, soil, edging, and more. Now's the time to make your neighbors green with envy. Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Timmy. I hope you're hungry. Sure I am, but I prefer broccoli to mushrooms. Well, I prefer your brother to you. Don't mess with Grandma's dishes. Mess with ours instead. Delicious dishes from around the globe that you're free to customize. Noodles and Company, your world kitchen. The Sun Current is proud to be your community news leader for over 50 years. Each week you can read their in-depth coverage on local government, school district news, high school sports matchups, community events, and newsmakers. The Sun Current's website is now mobile user friendly and provides breaking local news coverage daily. Check it out at current.mnsun.com. Welcome back to the Eden Prairie Community Center as we're in the first intermission with Blaine out in front of the Eagles. 3-0 here on PSB. Let's go ahead and give you a recap of that first period. Three Blaine goals, two of them by that second line, which is big for those guys. Get some support 
uh, from some deeper guys on their roster. Riley Tufty scored the first goal for Blaine. Uh, the other two were scored by uh, Luke Noterman, and uh, then the other for Blaine uh, was scored by Alex Penn. So again, goals by Tufty, then Noterman, then Alex Penn. For Tufty, it's his fourth goal of the year. Noterman, that was his tenth, and then Alex Penn, his third of the year for the Bengals. They're up 3 nothing. With the exception of that early flurry that the Eagles put on, Blaine's pretty much taken control of this game. I couldn't quite catch shots on goals, but I'm pretty sure Blaine does have an edge in that department, which uh, would be the first time this season that Eden Prairie has been outshot in a game uh, should Blaine end up outshooting the Eagles. Even in those uh, two losses against Benel St. Margaret's and Edina for the Eagles, they outshot the Red Knights and the Hornets in both of those games. So. Some work to do for Eden Prairie coming up in the second period. We'll see what they have in store coming up next as we have the second period on the way next. Woohoo! This is the best dead bath ever! Larry, what's with all that racket? I'm loving my new digs! This compost is amazing! Come on in, give it a try! What are you talking about? Oh yeah, you weren't kidding, Larry. This stuff is great! The mulch store has compost your garden, and yes, even the worms will love it. Stop by any of the mulch store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee to pick up the best compost in the Midwest. Online at mulchstoremn.com. Also shop rocks, seed, soil, edging, and more. Now's the time to make your neighbors green with envy. Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Timmy. I hope you're hungry. Sure I am, but I prefer broccoli to mushrooms. Well, I prefer your brother to you. Don't mess with Grandma's dishes. Mess with ours instead. Delicious dishes from around the globe that you're free to customize. Noodles & Company, your world kitchen. The Sun Current is proud to be your community news leader for over 50 years. Each week you can read their in-depth coverage on local government, school district news, high school sports matchups, community events, and newsmakers. The Sun Current's website is now mobile user friendly and provides breaking local news coverage daily. Check it out at current.mnsun.com. Great food and great sports. It's the Tavern on 4 and 5 in Eden Prairie. This season, the Tavern on 4 and 5 will be showing PSB broadcasts of Eden Prairie football and hockey on their big screen TVs. So make it a night out. Get some great food while watching your Eden Prairie Eagles at the Tavern on 4 and 5. Some of their classics include the Mediterranean Pizza, Tavern Turkey Burger, as well as delicious breakfasts that are served seven days a week. That's the Tavern on 4 and 5, just blocks from Eden Prairie High School. During this break in the action, I'd like to thank you for watching and ask for your assistance. In addition to live streaming games like this one, PSB Media also produces video commercials for clients. If someone you know is trying to grow their business, tell them to consider contacting production at PSBMN.com. The Internet is a powerful marketing tool, but due to its size it can be difficult for messages to reach the right ears. Optimize their valuable time and money. PSB Video will help drive localized traffic to the client's website. Using keyword-driven content, PSB Video can improve where businesses appear in search results. 
Nearer to the top results means more clicks and more business. So please tell those business owners you know to work smarter, not harder, by considering PSB Production. Find out more by emailing production at psbmn.com. Stay current on what's going on in your local community. The Sun Current is a local community newspaper that serves several communities in the Southwest Metro, including Eden Prairie, Edina, and Bloomington. The Sun Current will keep you up to date with the latest comings and goings on your school board, city council, arts and entertainment, and community events. And make sure you check out their in depth high school sports coverage featuring weekly articles on Eden Prairie, Edina, Jefferson, and Kennedy. From football and hockey to tennis and swimming, the Sun Current has your favorite team covered. Keep it local and visit the Sun Current website at current.mnsun.com. I wish it was spring. Hello, Carl. Whoa, who are you? I'm the Mulch Store Genie. Well, your entrance music makes you sound like an alien. We Mulch Store Genies survive on grass and compost, not snow and ice. If you're a genie, where's your lamp? Mulch Store Genies live... Never mind you. Let's get to the point. You had a wish for me, Carl. Yeah, I wished it would be spring. Your wish is my command. Sweet! This is much better! Wow, my lawn looks great too! Indeed, Carl. That's the power of the Mulch Store Genius. Thanks! Thanks. Your friends of my mulching power. The Mulch Store. Granted beautiful lawn and landscaping wishes since 2000. Store locations in Burnsville, Minatrista, Rosemount, and Shockley. Well, it was just a little bit of a rough yeah, tumble yeah. transition there. But we are underway here in the second period. Blaine out to an early 3-0 lead here over the Eagles. Let's see if he very can respond in the second period, or Blaine continues putting on good pressure. And what's probably been their best play game of the season, and how about that? They get their fourth goal, which is like saying it's their best game of the season. They continue with a little wraparound. Catching the Roacher now hugging that goalpost, and it's 4 nothing. Who would have guessed that? As we've seen time and time again tonight, great spacing right around the net and to Roacher. This time it looked like number 15, Ryan McArthur, was able to poke that one in from the backside and make it 4 to nothing. Just everyone's been a little slow reacting, even the Roacher looking at the replay was... Uh, very slow reacting to the wraparound, and it's not really blaming him. It's kind of been everyone on the squad who's been very lethargic out on the ice. And now here's Sullivan into the zone. Very much a shocker, not in the fact that Blaine is winning, but that they're up by four goals with a team that is possibly going through possibly a rebuilding slash here after losing a ton of seniors from their squad last season, which was rated among the top five, but upset in the Section 5 AA playoffs by Centennial, who, by the way, lost to Eden Prairie in the state quarterfinals last year. Happen to pick up who scored that goal, Kevin? Well, from my eye vantage point, it was number 15, Ryan MacArthur. I couldn't hear the confirmation from the PA announcer, so if you want to go with what I saw, then... Uh, it's possible. Then we'll go with that. He can definitely roll with MacArthur. He'll appreciate that since it would be his first goal of the season. Well, so, he, he rose the hands yeah, in exaltation. And he was in the vicinity of there where the go. shot came from. So, Face off will I'm be pretty the... confident with All this. Right. It's not like a shot in the dark, like I picked a guy right off the roster or anything. Did have a shot in the dark guess when it came to a couple of Eden Prairie players who are out for the game. We'll tell you about that in just a moment as it'll be Brady Chu playing it from the near side corner of the Eagle zone. Up ahead to Safran and will center it to Middlestad across the blue line. Middlestad drops it for Graham. Oh, Graham trying to cut towards the slot, but he had his pocket picked by a Blaine defenseman. And the Bengals will, well, actually icing waved off at the last second, so Chu and Lieberman will have to play it from their own zone. Comes Lieberman cutting along the right side. Weaves into the zone and Middlestad just one step ahead of the play. 
We were talking about how uh, we were thinking that maybe some Eden Prairie players had the flu bug. Well, turns out we were right, as we had an email from Brett Boldenau saying that he's currently out with the flu, but still watching from his house, saying that he knows Coach Smith will give them a good talk between periods, and thinks the Eagles will have a big turnaround coming up, but they got a hill to climb, trailing by four goals, and Kevin, credit goes to you, as you were thinking. Maybe the flu bug was going around the team, and you turned out to be right. Well, I was only right because I got a call from my aunt. Christmas might be a uh, little sparse since one of my cousin's kids spread the flu to all of their kids, so, or all of her kids. So, who knows who will show up? <laughs> we apologize at our capture device on our camera freeze for just a moment. It wasn't you, it was us, but we're... Back to having live video now. Blaine has it at the point. And they try to get it to the slot. But Lucky Johnson didn't receive that pass cleanly. He had a pretty open lane. Blaine gets it again in the slot, but it lost their stick handle. That second line doing a good job putting on some pressure as, oh, they will be outside. So he left it touched up at the blue line. Target singer to dump it in the zone. 14-20 to go. Second period. Blaine out to a 4-0 lead over Eden Prairie. Nolan Sullivan from the corner along with Hunter Johannes. Pinned up along the end line. And now Blaine gains possession of the puck. Lieberman turned it over. Now it's flipped up into the air. Another turnover. If we had the uh, Benil St. Margaret stat keepers, we could probably tell you how many turnovers the Eagles had, but it would be a high number. Unfortunately, we don't quite have that ability. We don't have a, an official statistician here, but it would be an ugly stat. It would be something to incorporate into one of these cameras, right? Yeah. The ability to register shots and yeah. chart them out. Get someone to make some software that does that. Put a little sensor on the camera. Behind the net, it'll be a delayed penalty coming up against Blaine. See if a power play for the Eagles can put a little energy into their skates. They're 0 for 1 so far tonight with a man advantage. The Roach are a little delayed heading to the bench, but they will get the extra attacker on the ice. And here comes Lieberman leading the rush. Lieberman to the circle. Now will stick handle behind the net. Around the world goes Lieberman trying to pass to the slot, but it was picked off by the goal scorer from earlier, Alex Penn, as Eden Prairie goes on the power play. Looking at penalty kill numbers for Blaine this season. Uh, Blaine's penalty kill, their percentage is currently sitting at just 75%, so a little bit of a work in progress for them. And here comes Tyler Safran into the zone. And we're going to get another whistle here with a minute 44 left. And I think they might be getting another Blaine penalty. So a five on three coming up for the Eagles. And if anything, you would think this would maybe get a little juice in their skates. Getting a two-man advantage for a minute 43. And we'll see what they can do here with the advantage. Face off, they'll let it back to Mark Sullivan at the point. They try to go across, but it was tipped up into the air and out of play. With now a minute 36 to go here on the five on three. And also key that two of the four goal scorers are in the box for Blaine. Tufty, and then also number 27, or 36, I should say, Alex Penn. Sullivan at the right point and go across to Lieberman. His shot through traffic turned away. In the corner, they'll feed it back to Lieberman. Across to Sullivan, back to Lieberman. One timer, getting a pad on it. That's the goaltender for the Blaine Bengals, Kalistad. Sullivan gets it back, works his way high slot. And again, Kalistad makes the save. A minute eight to go here on the five on three advantage. That was a big hit delivered as. Eden Prairie taking a shot, turned away, now Graham, 55, Graham from the circle, 
too much mustard on that one. Now down to the near side. Here's the middle stab. Over to Lieberman in the high slot, and that one will be tipped out of play. With 46 seconds left here on the five on three. Some shots on goal, but not really any grade-A scoring chances quite yet. Yeah, even with the two extra players out on the ice, Blaine doing a pretty good job holding its own, but credit Eden Prairie for at least maintaining the puck in the uh, Blaine end for that entire duration. Now we get a timeout on the ice. Yeah, I Definitely need to capitalize, though, with this five-on-three trailing four goals to nothing. I'm going to say I actually like this timeout that the coaching staff has called because if they're going to get back in this game. I think they got to score on this five-on-three and give them a chance to rest up that first unit and give them another shift on the ice. When we have a moment, I'd like to remind you that tonight's game is brought to you by the Tavern on four and five as they'll show broadcasts of Eden Prairie Hockey on the big screen TV throughout the season. Just send them a request and they'll be more than happy to put that up on the TVs. Also have delicious breakfast served seven days a week and some great dinner options as well. Lunch and dinner, I should say. I can make you some custom-made pizzas. Also, I'm still very partial to those cheesy tater tots. You've had some good stuff at the Tavern on 4 and 5. What's kind of your favorite thing you've had so far? Uh, the cowboy burger. Cowboy I forgot burger. to forgot to mention I was there two Mondays ago, and you know every time the tater tots, I remember them as being really tasty, and then they're even better once I have them there. So definitely check out Tavern on Four. One time they score, Mark Sullivan. Well, that timeout worked as they won the faceoff cleanly. Sullivan with a slap shot from the blue line, and that makes it four to one. Beautiful play there, power besting the goaltender. In position, Kalistad was to make the save, but such a hard ripper coming from Sullivan. Looked like it deflected off the lower pad and trickled into the net to make it 4-1. Yeah, he did get a piece of it, it looks like, here on the replay. And what's important is that'll still give Eden Prairie a, another 47 seconds of power play time to work with. So very well timed on the timeout and the score. Absolutely. So at the point, Eagles will have it. Lieberman will pass it down into the corner. And a shot turned away by Kalistad. And now Blaine, two on two shorthanded. They'll actually just elect to dump it and kill some clock. As the Rocher will play it over towards the far side. Turn it over. Here's Blaine throwing it out in front, but nobody home. And now Aguilar. Well, some of this confusion by Eden Prairie's end is caused by Sullivan actually breaking his stick on his last slap shot attempt, and he had to leave the ice. That one pops in the air. With just a couple of ticks left, and the Eagles are full strength. Or, excuse me, Blaine is full strength. And that one will be dumped in, and it will be icing against Blaine just after that penalty expired. So that'll make it four to one as Eden Prairie tries to work back in the game. I'd like to email us, we're at PSB channel four, or excuse me, announcers at PSBMN.com. And you can also find that link below your game tracker screen, announcers at PSBMN.com. Feel free to send us an email. Last from Argetsinger gives up a rebound. Johannes can't hit it home. Kalistad able to maintain his composure on that rebound as there's another blast. And now Blaine in transition. They force that up ahead to Austin Johnson. He tries a backhander from an odd angle. Doesn't go in. Now it's Eden Prairie pushing it up ahead to neutral. And from their own zone, it's Aguilar. Aguilar, a good move around Johnson. He'll dump it in. Makes a crazy deflection as the goaltender Kalistad was ready to play it behind his own net. But it actually deflected right back towards the faceoff circle. Johannes throws it to Hastings. Now across to Shu. Shu passes it behind the net. Run around as Lieberman picks it up. Lieberman quickly to Shu. Had it deflect off the skates, and that will allow Blaine to clear it outside. Johnson out there for a long shift for Blaine. Looking 
for his first point on the season here in this one. And behind the net, it's Nick Lieberman. Lieberman to Nolan Sullivan. They find Riley Argetsinger. Here's Argetsinger across the blue line. A little toe drag as he works his way into the corner. Now Nolan Sullivan can't hold it in. Blaine will get a transition opportunity with Blake Nackstrom. Nackstrom on a long shot. That one will be steered up into the netting by the goaltender, Sean DeRocher. Noodles and Company now offers catering among their other services. So if you have some New Year's parties coming up and don't want to do any cooking, well, let Noodles and Company do it for you. They have delicious options over at Noodles. One of my favorite dishes has got to be the Wisconsin mac and cheese. You can find their catering options on your game track or screen right here on PSBMN.com. Banked up ahead to Casey Middlestad. Now it's Michael Graham. Blade goes across over shoots team. And now it's Middlestad to Michael Graham. Graham lost it. Blade plays it to the corner. And that shot back into the zone. Safran. Middlestad. Middlestad trying to dance his way around the defense. He'll feed it up at the point to shoot. Now across to Louis Rail. Lucian bodies. That one was missed. Now Shu able to hold it in. Already some defensive switches as Shu and Rail are on the same defensive pair. Shu started the game with Lieberman as his partner. Aguilar with Rail. Trying to mix some things up to see if they can get some combos working here in the second. Trailing now 4-1. Here's Blaine behind the net. At 7.53 left, and that will be icing against the Blaine Bengals. In our next PSB-produced hockey broadcast for the Eden Prairie Boys, not going to be till January 15th, as we'll be on a bit of a break with the Schwann Cup next week. Again, you can still find a link or an embedded broadcast of those games on our website. Just the Schwann Cup will be producing those games. And after the Schwann Cup, Eagles hit the Iron Range for Cloquet and Duluth East. Cloquet will hopefully have on the air with the Cloquet broadcasters. Duluth East, unfortunately, might be out of luck for that one. Have to follow along on Twitter to find out who wins that game. Lane behind the net, thrown out in front. And it hits the goalpost, still loose in front. And now it's taken away to safety by Eden Prairie. And that'll be scooped up out of the air by the goaltender, Kalistad, with 7-12 remaining here in the second period. Jesse Slauson almost had a goal. Ranked both pipes, it looked like, or at least played in. Like it just cut across the goal line. Beautiful shot, but... Just couldn't capitalize and make it 5-1. Credit to Blaine Forcheck. They checked an Eden Prairie player off the puck. Cost a turnover, which created that half. Couldn't quite catch the number, though, as Pizan lays that up ahead to Johannes. Johannes gets thrown into the wall. And now Blaine overshoot an outlet pass up ahead to Austin Johnson as they'll ice the puck. Next girls hockey broadcast, I believe, coming up New Year's Eve, we'll have the championship of the Eagles midwinter meltdown. That tournament starts coming up next week. We'll be teaming up with the Creighton Durham Hall broadcasters if you'd like to watch those games. And should Creighton Durham Hall play Eden Prairie in that tournament, that will also be on the air here on PSP. That tourney usually brings together eight of the top 20 or so girls high school hockey teams in Minnesota. Watch our broadcasts or like to see the games in person. Make sure you stop on by for some very good girls hockey next week. Here's Blaine in the corner. And send it back behind the net. And around to Brodzinski. Not a chasing around, but Blaine's been the quicker team to the puck so far in this game. And now out in front, it will be gloved down by the Eagles and up ahead to Safran. 
Safran. We'll play it to the end line. Over to Graham. Graham gets checked off the puck. And now a bouncing puck goes through Alex Penn. Hit by Brady Shue. Now Safran finds Graham. Graham to Middlestad. Gains the zone. Middlestad to the slot. Now circle. And his shot goes just wide. Blaine will fire a long shot on to prevent icing on a lot of line change. Heads up play by the Bengals. Now it's Argetsinger. Argetsinger to Sullivan. His shot is broken up by the number 15 of the defenseman, Ryan MacArthur. Scored the fourth goal of the game for the Bengals. Across the blue line, that was Blomer. Corner, it's Bogey. And now flipped out to neutral. Now turn it over. It's Mark Sullivan, good at the line, picks it into the zone. And MacArthur will play it towards the corner. Hank, but not out, held in by the defense. Shot through some bodies, turned away by the goaltender, Kalistan. Boost for the blue line. Eden Perry still maintains possession. Weak backhander goes over the net, and Eden Perry's going to pick up a tripping penalty. 4.35 of the second period. Tripped up a player in the slot. Pretty easy call from the official. And Nolan Sullivan will head to the box as we'll get our first look at the Eden Prairie power play, or the Blade power play unit. Could have saved that with the Eden Prairie penalty kill as well. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. Either uh, one works. Yeah. Opportunity uh, now for Blaine. Get back in the scoring column. They've been pretty successful on the power play, too, this year. About 35%, 36%, somewhere in that range. Well, their percentage nearly identical to Eden Prairie's heading into the game. The Eagles were 37% heading into this one. Blaine, 36.8. Of course, that percentage for the Eagles has gone, I guess, actually probably gone up since they didn't get that power play goal. They'll turn it over with the Bengals. And Eden Prairie's been dangerous shorthanded. They do have, I think, four shorties on the year. They do. And here's Middlestad trying to thread it across. And now into the zone, Middlestad. Play it back out to the neutral. Into 15 on the power play. Not a whole lot working for Blaine so far. As yeah, so they'll dump it in where it'll be picked up by Easton Brodzinski. Point. And pass over and go across to the weak side, but unable to hold on to that pass. And they'll still maintain possession of the puck behind the net. It's Swanson. Slauson. Plays it up to the point to turn twist. Now from the near side corner, two Blaine Bengals and one Eden Prairie player trying to dig it out. And the pass goes between a couple of players. 35 seconds left on the power play. Noterman with a goal so far for the Bengals gets wrestled off the puck by Nick Lieberman. And now Hastings will clear it away. As Blaine time for another rush before the power play expires. Center ice. It's Brodzinski trying to go five hole, but turned away by DeRocher. And the Eagles are full strength. And now in front, they score. Blaine up five to one immediately after that penalty expires. So technically not a power play goal, but they did probably have the numbers at least in the area as they make it five to one. Grant Bogey, right place, right time. Beautiful, accurate shot. Sniped that one top shelf past the left shoulder of DeRocher just off that uh, right face-off circle. Again, great execution, quick wrists, and great finish as well to make it 5-1. 5-1 Blaine as Grant Bogey gets the goal. And for Bogey, it is his first of the season. Two guys picking up their first goals of the season as we're going to get a penalty coming up. And I believe this one is going to be against the Eagles. Or are they just going to uh, 
I thought I saw the referee raising his hand. There was some hard hitting there in the corner, but it looks like we will remain full strength for both squads. And Nolan Sullivan just had some uh, equipment issues to work out. Now here's Blaine off the faceoff, dumping it into the Eden Prairie zone. Aguilar from the corner. Play it over to Nolan Sullivan. And clear it away, held in by Tufty. From behind the cage, it's Austin Johnson. Nolan pops in the air and drops in front of the net. And now it's cleared out to neutral. Now to the right side, dumped in as the Bengals are off on a piecemeal change. Here's Mark Sullivan. Sullivan to bank it up and out of the zone, but again, Arthur will just shoot it right back in. A little bit back and forth, Eden Ferry clears it, Blaine dumps it back in on a dump and chase. But you can afford to do that when you got yourself a four goal lead. And off at an angle, it's turned away by DeRocher. Now here's Blaine out at center ice. Passing it over to Penn. Penn gets it ahead. There's a wrist shot that goes over the net. And they're now trying a wraparound to Slauson. They got the Rocher once on a wraparound, and they tried a, another one as it looked like they may have had him out of position with a minute left here in the second period. One touch into the zone. Chasing it down will be Turnquist. And it will be covered up by Sean DeRocher. And you can email us throughout the broadcast, announcers at psbmn.com, announcers at psbmn.com. Also find that link just above your game tracker screen. Give us some thoughts on the game so far. Tell us what you think Blaine has been doing well or what you think Eden Prairie needs to do better coming up in the third period. Been a big surprise so far in this one with the Bengals leading by four goals. Eden Prairie, a top 10 rated team. Blaine, not in the top 10 rankings. As it's Shoe in the corner. They'll play it along the rail. And now it's Middlestad. Getting it up ahead to Graham. They'll chase it down, has Safrid, and he scores! Tyler Safrid off of a pass from Michael Graham, makes it 5-2. to two. Could also play from those two guys on that first line, getting behind the Blaine defense, as it's now a three-goal deficit. Well, just to give you perspective how quickly they got down the ice, I was trying to pan at a normal speed, and they beat me all the way down there to get the score. <laughs> Well, you Excellent had the goal on, skating, though. yeah. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> that they were so fast they got <laughs> off my camera in a hurry. That'll make it 5-2 to two and at least give Eagles some positive things to talk about here in the locker room. But Blaine and their squad has to be very happy with the way things have gone so far here on the road as it's Graham behind the net. Graham over to Middlestad. Middlestad will play it over the corner with 12 seconds remaining. Here's Brady Shue from the end wall. And we have a whistle on the play, and we have someone getting a slash, and I think it might be Shue. Actually, they're going to get, I think, Lieberman with the slash. So Blaine goes back on the power play. Blaine 0 for 1 with a man advantage so far. Although. They did score immediately after their power play expired a few minutes ago here in the second. In under 10 seconds, there's a shot at David inadvertently deflected down by Noterman as that one is on net, but that one goes through. Blaine up 6-2. to two. As that is uh, Slossy who picks up the goal. As the Bengals score right at the buzzer, the clock has all zeros. <laughs> That's interesting. Don't often see that. No a real protest from the Eden Prairie. Well, we have the luxury of having replay. Let's take a look. We have uh, the clock running. Oh, that one did beat the buzzer, it looked like. I thought it did, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that did. It looked like with maybe 
four or five tenths of a second. That looked like it was pretty clearly in. Apologize, only had the one look, but pretty sure that one did indeed go in in time. So six to two Blaine as we head into the second intermission. You are listening to High School Hockey right here on PSBMN.com. This is the best dead bath ever. Larry, what's with all that racket? I'm loving my new digs. This compost is amazing. Come on in, give it a try. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. You weren't kidding, Larry. This stuff is great. The mulch store has compost your garden, and yes, even the worms will love it. Stop by any of the mulch store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee to pick up the best compost in the Midwest. Online at mulchstoremn.com. Also shop rocks, seed, soil, edging, and more. Now's the time to make your neighbors green with envy. Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Timmy. I hope you're hungry. Sure I am, but I prefer broccoli to mushrooms. Well, I prefer your brother to you. Don't mess with Grandma's dishes. Mess with ours instead. Delicious dishes from around the globe that you're free to customize. Noodles and Company, your world kitchen. The Sun Current is proud to be your community news leader for over 50 years. Each week you can read their in-depth coverage on local government, school district news, high school sports matchups, community events, and newsmakers. The Sun Current's website is now mobile user friendly and provides breaking local news coverage daily. Check it out at current.mnsun.com. Great food and great sports. It's the Tavern on 4 and 5 in Eden Prairie. This season, the Tavern on 4 and 5 will be showing PSB broadcasts of Eden Prairie football and hockey on their big screen TVs. So make it a night out. Get some great food while watching your Eden Prairie Eagles at the Tavern on 4 and 5. Some of their classics include the Mediterranean Pizza, Tavern Turkey Burger, as well as delicious breakfasts that are served seven days a week. That's the Tavern on 4 and 5, just blocks from Eden Prairie High School. During this break in the action, I'd like to thank you for watching and ask for your assistance. In addition to live streaming games like this one, PSB Media also produces video commercials for clients. If someone you know is trying to grow their business, tell them to consider contacting production at PSBMN.com. The Internet is a powerful marketing tool, but due to its size it can be difficult for messages to reach the right ears. Optimize their valuable time and money. PSB Video will help drive localized traffic to the client's website. Using keyword-driven content, PSB Video can improve where businesses appear in search results. Nearer to the top results means more clicks and more business. So please, tell those business owners you know to work smarter, not harder, by considering PSB Production. Find out more by emailing production at psbmn.com. Stay current on what's going on in your local community. The Sun Current is a local community newspaper that serves several communities in the Southwest Metro, including Eden Prairie, Edina, and Bloomington. The Sun Current will keep you up to date with the latest comings and goings on your school board, city council, arts and entertainment, and community events. And make sure you check out their in-depth high school sports coverage featuring weekly articles on Eden Prairie, Edina, Jefferson, and Kennedy. 
From football and hockey to tennis and swimming, the Sun Current has your favorite team covered. Keep it local and visit the Sun Current website at current.mnsun.com. I wish it was spring. Hello, Carl. Whoa, who are you? I'm the Mulch Store Genie. Well, your entrance music makes you sound like an alien. We Mulch Store Genies survive on grass and compost, not snow and ice. If you're a genie, where's your lamp? Mulch Store Genies live... Never mind you. Let's get to the point. You had a wish for me, Carl. Yeah, I wished it would be spring. Your wish is my command. Sweet! This is much better. Wow, my lawn looks great, too. Indeed, Carl. That's the power of the mulch store genius. Thanks. Tell your friends of my mulching powers. The Mulch Store. Granting beautiful lawn and landscaping wishes since 2000. Store locations in Burnsville, Minnetrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Welcome back to the Eden Prairie Community Center as we're at the end of the second period with Blaine out to a surprising 6-2 lead after Slauson scores a buzzer-beater goal to put the Bengals back up by four goals, and that might really hurt the uh, Eden Prairie momentum as they had cut the deficit down to three on that power on that goal by uh, Tyler Safran on the uh, rush by he and Michael Graham, but Blaine beating the buzzer, and wonder if that one might put things out of range here in this game. Uh, just recapping some individual uh, scoring numbers so far in the game. The Eden Prairie goals have been scored by Mark Sullivan and Tyler Safran. Uh, Michael Graham has an assist for Eden Prairie. And some notables for Blaine. Their goals have come from Riley Tufty. Also, uh, Alex Penn has a goal. Luke Noterman. Ryan MacArthur. And then, of course, the uh, guy we talked about just a minute ago, Slauson, beating the buzzer for Blaine. As, uh, as have been, those have been other goal scorers so far. Uh, shots on goal was able to catch those uh, from the PA announcer just before the break. Uh, Blaine currently out shooting Eden Curry by a 24 to 22 margin. If that were to hold, they would be the first team to outshoot Eden Curry this season. So probably looking for a win, but also looking to become the first team to outshoot the Eagles. We will take another timeout and have the third period on the way next here on PSB Media. Great food and great sports. It's the Tavern on 4 and 5 in Eden Prairie. 
This season, the Tavern on 4 and 5 will be showing PSB broadcasts of Eden Prairie football and hockey on their big screen TVs. So make it a night out. Get some great food while watching your Eden Prairie Eagles at the Tavern on 4 and 5. Some of their classics include the Mediterranean Pizza, Tavern Turkey Burger, as well as delicious breakfasts that are served seven days a week. That's the Tavern on 4 and 5, just blocks from Eden Prairie High School. During this break in the action, I'd like to thank you for watching and ask for your assistance. In addition to live streaming games like this one, PSB Media also produces video commercials for clients. If someone you know is trying to grow their business, tell them to consider contacting production at PSBMN.com. The Internet is a powerful marketing tool, but due to its size it can be difficult for messages to reach the right ears. Optimize their valuable time and money. PSB Video will help drive localized traffic to the client's website. Using keyword-driven content, PSB Video can improve where businesses appear in search results. Nearer to the top results means more clicks and more business. So please, tell those business owners you know to work smarter, not harder, by considering PSB Production. Find out more by emailing production at psbmn.com. I wish it was spring. Hello, Carl. Whoa, who are you? I'm the Mulch Store Genie. Well, your entrance music makes you sound like an alien. We Mulch Store Genies survive on grass and compost, not snow and ice. If you're a genie, where's your lamp? Mulch Store Genies live... Never mind you. Let's get to the point. You had a wish for me, Carl. Yeah, I wished it would be spring. Your wish is my command. Sweet! This is much better! Wow, my lawn looks great too! Indeed, Carl. That's the power of the mulch store genius. Thanks! Tell your friends of my mulching power. The Mulch Store. Granting beautiful lawn and landscaping wishes since 2000. Store locations in Burnsville, Minatrista, Rosemount, and Shakopee. Stay current on what's going on in your local community. The Sun Current is a local community newspaper that serves several communities in the Southwest Metro, including Eden Prairie, Edina, and Bloomington. The Sun Current will keep you up to date with the latest comings and goings on your school board, city council, arts and entertainment, and community events. And make sure you check out their in-depth high school sports coverage featuring weekly articles on Eden Prairie, Edina, Jefferson, and Kennedy. From football and hockey to tennis and swimming, the Sun Current has your favorite team covered. Keep it local and visit the Sun Current website at current.mnsun.com. What's with all that racket? I'm loving my new digs. This compost is amazing. Come on in, give it a try. Well, we set our camera and about... set our capture device on plug oh, again, yeah. but now we're good to go. You were oh, kidding, we're good Larry. To go now. This stuff is great. We have Kevin ready to spring into action. The Mulch Store has compost your garden, and seven. yes, even the worms will love it. Stop by any of the Mulch Store locations yeah, exactly. in Burnsville, Minnesota, Rosemount, and Shakopee to pick up the that best compost in the Midwest. Yes. Online at MulchStoreMN.com. Also shop rocks, seed, soil, everything. Now is the time to make your neighbors green with them. They have a chance. The loose puck in front and they score. In 6-3. That puck was just sitting there for an eternity. Waiting for somebody to hit it home. Finally the Eagles do. Sure I am. But I prefer blocking. Possibly a rail or 
Well, I can tell who it was. It's six to I three, though. He's very. You. If you can't score on one hack, two yeah. hacks, three hacks, try four and five, and we finally dishes. push one past. Mess with ours instead. A great Delicious effort dishes there. from around the globe that you're free to customize. Putting the barrage Noodles on. And company. Goldtender Calistad completely sprawled out. The Sun Current is proud to be your community news leader for over 50 years. Each week you can read their in-depth coverage on local government, school district news, high school sports matchups, community events, and newsmakers. The Sun Current's website is now mobile user friendly and it provides breaking local news coverage daily. Check it out at current.mnsun.com. Now played behind the net to Brodzinski. Rail was credited with the goal in case you didn't hear. And they score! Ethan Brodzinski makes it 7 3. May have been tipped on the way, but for now we'll give him credit as he fires one from the point and get past DeRocher. And these teams have been trading goals. You made that basketball tweet at the end of the second period, kind of like the teams are trading hoops right now, but it's goals instead. Well, now it's almost like football. Yeah. You got a field goal against a touchdown. <laughs> Seven to three. Knew these teams are both good offensively, but who would have thought a team put up seven goals against Eden Prairie? I'll look at the schedule in just a second. They have not given up anywhere near that number of goals. Looking to make it four, but they can't beat it across to Hunter Johannes. Getting it back was yeah, the Eagles. And now it's covered up by the goaltender, Kalistan. And there's a little hack there at the end of the play by Tyler Safgren. Just to the left. And the goaltender DeRocher and off the face off and gets pushed to the corner. Apologize there. I think we had our ad still running. The audio from them during those first couple of minutes should be off now as It's still 7-3, it dumped in the zone. In case you missed us saying it, it's kind of become almost as open in front that they have Matthew Hastings trying to make it 7-4. These teams trading goals like basketball teams trade buckets. Rotating between a three and four goal lead here for the Blade Bengals. 14-53 left. I'll play it up to the point. There's a shot blocked in front. It's still loose in front, and that'll trickle just wide of the net. Rung around, but not out as it's held in by Blaine. And now in the slot, trying to go high, blocker side, was Peterson. All of the point, another shot through traffic, and that one's blocked. And now here comes Riley Argetsinger, as he'll push it into the zone. Over. Here's Middlestad. Middlestad dancing towards the net. But good fundamental goaltending there by Palestad to come out and cut off the angle. Now at the point, shot again through some bodies. <laughs> Palestad looking behind him. Never like to see that if you're a coach, but he had indeed covered it up for a faceoff with 14.02 left here in the uh, third period. Oh, kind of an interesting game going on here. Seven goals given up by Eden Prairie. That's by far their most of the season. In fact, uh, looking at their overall schedule, they have not given up more than four goals in a game this season. In fact, their season high coming into it was that 4-3 loss to Edina in overtime. So nearly doubling. Eden Prairie's high for goals given up this season. High power Blaine offense that they have working. Eden Prairie 
Missouri can't stick handle outside their own zone as it's Rail. Rail trying to go across. It's Nolan Sullivan. Bottled up out at center. And it's Nick Lieberman. He's on. Able to tip it back out, but Blaine dumps it in. We've seen this sequence before where Eden Prairie clears it about three or four times, but then Blaine sends it right back in the zone. Lieberman weaving around the defense. Now to the slot, lost it. And now with a head of steam, it's Landborg. Landborg along the near side will walk it up to the point. And that one trickles just wide after it took a deflection. Behind the net, it's Bogey. Already has a goal in the game for Blaine. And losing it was Landborg. Through some traffic. That one pops in the air. Still loose. DeRocher now back in position. And they can't feed it to the point, and it's cleared away. Now here comes Alex Pizan hustling down the ice. Getting there first is going to be MacArthur. Right around the end wall to Bogey. Lane spinning around in the corner. It's Cornquist. 12-08, third period, 7-3. Blaine on top of Eden Prairie. But the way these goals have been scored, I don't necessarily count out Eden Prairie quite yet, but to find a way to stop some of these Blaine offensive players who have had a lot of success. That one's flipped up and outside the zone, and icing will be called by the official. Athlete PT provides performance training to improve your performance on the ice, on the field, or on the court. No matter the sport, they can get you playing at the highest level as training begins on the offseason to get you prepared for championship shape. That is Athlete PT. Dr. Grant Norland does a great job over at Athlete PT. Uh, make sure you visit their website, athletepteonline.com. Again, just a great way, no matter your level, if you're youth, high school, college, or even an adult, a great way to be trained in whatever sport you play. Power play for Eden Prairie, by the way. And going off for a slash was Blaine. Now it'll be Sullivan up at the point. Now it'll Lieberman. Lieberman plays it down to the corner to Michael Graham. Now back to Lieberman up top. Blocker save made by the goaltender for Blaine, Kalistad. Now Lieberman, one-timer across to Sullivan, open net, but Graham couldn't gather up that puck. 121 left on the power play, and Graham will lose it in his skates. Still holds it in the zone, though, as they send it down low, but it goes past Sullivan. Graham walking it towards the point, now cuts to the right side. Sure to slow it down. 43 left on the power play. Right over to Middlestad. Middlestad gains the line. Now in the slot. A little fancy dipsy do, but the save will be made by the goaltender Kalistad. With 29 seconds left on the power play and 10 13 They're in the third period, but Middlestad with a nice little stick handling move. Around the Blaine defense, unfortunately, just ran out of real estate. By the way, Casey Middlestad's grandparents are tuning in from Iowa for tonight's game, so thank you for watching this evening. Hoping that Casey and the Eagles can keep the rally going as they'll send it across to Rail. Now Aguilar up at the point. His shot deflected wide. There's a hard hit. Delivered into Tyler Safran. Chasing it down, MacArthur. MacArthur can't bank it out, but unfortunately for Eden Prairie, Rail caught the puck, but then dropped it in the Blaine bench, so it'll be a face-off with just two seconds left on the power play. If you'd like to email us here in the booth, we're at announcers at psbmn.com. Announcers at psbmn.com. Let us know who you're cheering for, where you're watching from, and maybe give us some thoughts on what both teams need to do 
can also the final few minutes of the game. You can also follow us on Twitter at PSBMN. Got a tweet from Aaron Morum, and uh, he said the last time Eden Prairie gave up seven goals at home was against Lakeville North. They lost seven to nothing. He said back on December 26th. I'm not sure which year that is, though. I think I know what guys. We're going to get a penalty coming up against Eden Prairie. I think I know what game he's referring to. Uh, Eden Prairie, I think, technically was the home team, but I think it was actually at the St. Louis Park tourney. Okay. It, it could be a different game, but I know Lakeville North did beat them 7-0 at that tourney a couple years ago. So that would have been in yeah. 2012, possibly? Yeah. Okay. Then again, they could have played another game here at the Community Center where North won 7-0. I know North has been one of those teams that's kind of had Eden Prairie's number over the years, so certainly wouldn't be surprised. Including that one in the state tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's Lakeville North one in overtime. So heading into the box will be Wesley Young for the Eagles. And his Blaine will go on a power play. Thanks, Aaron, for the information, though. I had forgotten about that game. And... Maybe we can get some more free research from Aaron to find out the last time they gave up eight goals. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> Just like we had the Benilde St. Margaret's guys give us all those stats when we had the Benilde Eden Prairie game. Gotta love free labor, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Good information as well. <laughs> yeah. Again, Twitter, at PSBMN. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, for the tweets. Yeah, you can always tweet at us as well. We have both of our phones here ready to pick those up. As Blaine will have it behind the net with a minute 20 to go on the power play. Passing it over to the left side. Now that memory serves me right, I actually remember talking to Lee Smith before their next game saying that I think they had like five guys who got hurt in that game. They had like two defensemen who had to move to forward, so that certainly didn't help their cause. He said it was... Uh, one of those games where it was kind of Murphy's Law. Going around the world, taking a shot to Roach, and makes the save, and it's cleared away with 45 seconds left. Yeah, it's been an adventure tonight for DeRocher. A lot more soft off the pads usually tonight, giving up a lot of rebounds out in front. Hey, yeah, wonder if kind of that mental edge maybe gone after that he died in a game as well as he came up with some tremendous highlight reel saves against the Hornets in the championship of the Holiday Classic. And sometimes goalies just have those games where they're not seeing the puck very well and this very well could be one of those games for the junior goaltender. Nine seconds left on the power play. By the way, Weinchek is the backup goaltender. He did play the second game of the Holiday Classic against Grand Rapids, so it's not like Ferrocher is coming off playing three games in a row. He is still relatively fresh as Blaine. And Eden Perry are now both full strength. Seven oh eight, third period, Bengals still up seven three. I guess we'll call it a defensive stalemate now that we've gone, what, four minutes without a goal. <laughs> yeah, the last period and a <laughs> half, it's very arbitrary. Yeah. The teams combined for ten goals in this game. I believe that's the most we've uh, had so far in an Eden Prairie game. Blaine, though, has played a couple of high-scoring games, though, so far this season. I believe they had a high-scoring one against Maple Grove in a matchup that unfortunately ended in a little bit of a brawl between both squads that led to some Blaine players getting suspended. That shot steered away. Here's Nolan Sullivan at the top of the circle. He'll dump it in. Graham gets blasted off the puck. Here's Blaine for neutral. I just want to bring up the Blaine Bengals and give their defense some credit when we have a moment. Besides that... Rush for Graham and Safran connected for a goal. Blaze kept Michael Graham pretty quiet so far in this game. And totally tied up Middlestad as well. Indeed, I think Middlestad doesn't have a point in this game, so that's the key when you're facing Eden Prairie. you got to keep Graham and Middlestad off the score sheet. That's kind of the mentality when you got those superstars. You're not going to totally silence them, but uh, you can force the role players to step up. And, uh, of course, when your offense is clicking on all cylinders as well, 
goes a long way to help a team, you know, end up being victorious once that final buzzer rings. That's the face off. It's played over to Lieberman. And now he shot outside the zone. And icing against the Eagles. So again, our next broadcast, at least produced by us, will not be for about another month here on PSB. As next week, the Eagles are in the Schwann Cup. We'll have that Schwann Cup broadcast feed embedded on our website. And after the Schwann Cup, that one goes off the goalpost. A high rising shot like a phoenix deflected up into the air by the goaltender DeRocher. Yeah, Tufty got a good look at that <laughs> net. Just able to get a piece was DeRocher. Give you one look here before we go back to live action. As that one's cleared away by Eden Prairie. Again, to briefly finish my thought before that shot, after the Schwann Cup, Eagles are up on the iron range to play Cloquet and Duluth East. I believe we should be able to embed the uh, Cloquet broadcast on our website, but Duluth East, that might be the one game this year we're not able to webcast. A little bit of a drive for Kevin and I to make it up there, but... We'll see if anyone in Duluth is up there broadcasting the game. If they are, we'll put it on our site. But after that Iron Range road trip, we will have the home stretch of Eden Prairie game for the rest of the season, including all eight of their Lake Conference matchups. And Blaine Bangle fans, if you'd like to have your games webcast, feel free to let us know here at PSB. Love to talk with you and talk about an arrangement. Contact us at psbmn.com. We can get your games on air no matter how many you want, whether it's one or an entire season. And also do any sport as well. That's psbmn.com. We'd love to broadcast your games right here on PSB Media. Well, it's really any activity. If you know someone who's got an event of any kind to be covered, we are going to be covering the uh, Alark Ice Dive on New Year's Day out of Minnetonka, so... Any sort of streaming activity, we are definitely uh, like to put our name in there. Puck is tied up in the corner, so yeah, if you want to see some crazy people dive into Lake Minnetonka New Year's morning, you could do so on PSBMN.com. Did get confirmation that we will have that event streamed. You can also register for that event as well. That money goes to a great cause. Although many people probably questioning the logic. Why would you? Oh, hold on. Let's talk about this rush, though. Was Andy Aguilar is going to get called for interference, preventing a possible rush for Blaine. And so it'll be a Bengal power play with 3.53 left in the third period. I'm just going to finish, Kevin, but people would say, are you kidding me? i got to pay to jump into Lake Minnetonka in the middle of January? But the money does go for a great cause. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the whole idea. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people can do some pretty dumb things, right, and not yeah. have to pay into it. But <laughs> Also, since we are streaming it, you can have family members, friends from all over the country, even worlds, watch you and be like, man, you were brave, or something like that. Well, they also have a big competition where you get different ranks depending on the uh, number of years you jump. They kind of give you robes like they do in professional wrestling. It's an overall fun event. Make sure you check it out as that'll be cleared outside the zone by Eden Prairie. Here's MacArthur who already has a goal tonight for Blaine. And Bengals going to get another power play coming up as they'll have a six on four going while the goaltender is pulled. And Eden Prairie will finally touch it up. So a five on three for a minute 24 for Blaine. As things kind of turning into Murphy's Law here for Eden Prairie the past few minutes. Well, it's really been for the entire yeah. game, down four goals. A uh, higher-ranked team coming in on their home ice where the Eagles have been successful over the years. And, uh, again, credit to Blaine for skating very hard, very quickly, and some of their set pieces working very well uh, against this back check of the Eagles. One-timer, DeRocher slides across the crease to make a slave on, save on that slap shot. So again, if you'd like to have your events, sports, anything webcast, we can do so on PSB. Lots of different options. We can even get it in HD, like you're seeing tonight here on tonight's game. Back to live action now with a two going, and there's a Blaine goal. Eight on the scoreboard for the Bengals, and 
have to really go in the archives to find the last time Eden Prairie has given up eight goals in a game. Blaine with a power play. Capitalization, five on three. Give you a look here on the replay if we can. As you can see, DeRocher giving up a rebound. It's not the sharpest he's ever been. It's one of those games where he's had his struggles. There is a minute 30 to go still on the Blaine power play five on four to add insult to injury. Very similar scenario as what happened in Eden Prairie's favor in the second period when they had the five on three, got the goal just before the close of the first penalty and still had about a minute to work with, but only ended up with one goal. Here's Blaine across the blue line. Into the slot, lost their stick handle. And now it goes up to MacArthur. Across to the left side, they'll play it back behind the net. The Fussy. Different players now seeing some ice time for both Blaine and Eden Prairie with the game pretty much decided. Oh man, that one rings off the goal post. That one was a howitzer right off the stick of MacArthur. Two goal posts have been wrong. And boy, those shots are a little more accurate. Blaine's up to 10 goals. Offense has been on tonight for the Bengals. 45 to go on the power play as they'll play it up to the point. Spinning around is Maschio across to MacArthur. Now they feed it back down low. And out in front, puck is loose. Now Pizan picks it up. He'll backhand it outside the zone with 25 seconds to go on the Blaine power play. And approaching the 130 mark here of the third period with the Bengals on their way to easily their most impressive win of the season. Without a doubt. Well, here's Blaine. Playing it up to the point to MacArthur. Out of the left side. Blocked through traffic. That one is blocked by Lieberman and cleared away by Eden Prairie as they're now full strength. Make sure you stick around after the game for the Sun Current Post Game Show. We have a scoring summary on the game. Some notable scoring stats as a lot of guys on the score sheet for Blaine, including two guys who had their first goals of the season for the Bengals. And here's Aguilar. Lost it and Blaine will be offsides at the line with 48 seconds left. So up next for the Eagles, it doesn't get any easier. They'll be taking on Hill Murray in the first round of the Schwann Cup. The toughest opponent you could draw for that tournament outside of possibly Dinah. We'll have to find a way to get things turned around in a hurry. That matchup against Hill Murray Monday at 2.30. Lane will also be playing in a tournament next week as well. As that'll be covered up by the goaltender DeRocher with 31 seconds left. Thank all of our sponsors for providing coverage of tonight's game, including the Mulch Store, also the Tavern on 4 and 5, Noodles and Company, the Sun Current, among others. Make sure you give all of them your business here during the holiday season as your money stays in the local economy. And also a great way to keep broadcasts of Southwest Metro Sports here on the air. 15 seconds left as Louis Rail picks it up behind the net. Rail passes it over to the right, and now they go across to Johannes. Can't dance around Montgomery. And now Blaine will shoot it down the length of the ice. With <laughs> and the scorekeeper, a little generous there, not stopping the clock when it was ice with about two seconds left. I think everyone won't uh, have a problem with that as Blaine skates away with an 8-3 victory over the Eden Prairie Eagles. Congratulations to them on a very impressive win. Uh, stay tuned as we have the Sun Current Post Game Show on the way next right here on PSB. The Sun Current is proud to be your community news leader for over 50 years. Each week you can read their in-depth coverage on local government, 
school district news, high school sports matchups, community events, and newsmakers. The Sun Currents website is now mobile user friendly and provides breaking local news coverage daily. Check it out at current.mnsun.com. And welcome back to the Eden Prairie Community Center. This game has gone final with Blaine scoring eight goals on Eden Prairie to win by a final score of eight to zero. This is the Sun Current Post Game Show here on PSB. The Sun Current, your community news leader for over 50 years, providing coverage of city council, school board, community events, arts and entertainment, and high school sports. You can find all of that and the Southwest Metro with your local Sun Current newspaper delivered every Thursday. And you can also find them online. Their website now mobile user friendly at current.mnsun.com current.mnsun.com So Blaine with a big offensive in output in this game scoring eight goals, becoming the first team in well, hey, a very long time to do that. Again, uh, we had a tweet from Aaron Morham saying the last time Eden Prairie gave up seven goals was against Lakeville North a couple of years ago, and Blaine was able to exceed that total by scoring eight this evening. Uh, just running down some of their goal scorers here in the game. Alex Penn and Easton Brozinski both had goals for Blaine on the first line. They also had all three of their second line players score goals. Riley Tufty, Luke Noterman, Austin Johnson score. Grant Bogey had a goal. And also uh, Ryan MacArthur scored for Blaine. I think I got everybody on there. All eight of their goal scores for Eden Prairie. Uh, their tallies were netted by Mark Sullivan, Tyler Safrin, and also they had a goal uh, scored by, uh, who am I missing here? I believe Sullivan may have had the other one. Safgren, Sullivan, and yep. Rail. And Rail, yep, that's correct. Rail had the third goal for Eden Prairie during that flurry we had early in the third period. Uh, didn't quite catch shots on goal, but I think Blaine did hold the edge in that category, and they would be the first team to outshoot Eden Prairie this season. So overall, a very strong performance for them. Uh, Blaine's next game, if we take a look at their schedule, will again be in a holiday tournament coming up next week, I do believe, as uh, they'll be uh, playing East Grand Forks over at the East Grand Forks Civic Center. That'll be a tough matchup against the defending Class 1A state champions. Again, Eden Prairie will be in the Schwann Cup next week against Hill Murray. Uh, we will not have broadcast produced by PSB of the Schwann Cup, but we will have the Schwann Cup broadcast embedded on our PSB website, so uh, you'll still be able to tune into the games through PSBMN.com. Same deal after the Schwann Cup when Eden Prairie goes up to the Iron Range to play Cloquet and Duluth East, so you're not going to hear us again until Thursday, January 15th, when Eden Prairie heads to the Plymouth Ice Center to take on Wyzetta and open up Lake Conference play, so... We'll take a little bit of a, a vacation, so to speak, from Eden Prairie Boys Hockey before we come on back to that Wyzetta game. But again, you can still tune in to the broadcast of the Schwann Cup and the Iron Range games here on PSBMN.com through some other media companies. Final score tonight, it is Blaine 8, Eden Prairie 3. For Kevin Hagstrom and Brett Johnson, we are signing off and saying have a good night. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's broadcast right here on PSB Media. Thanks for tuning in to live, local, play-by-play -play coverage of tonight's game. Catch all the action all season long on your home for Southwest Metro Sports, PSB Media. Tonight's game was brought to you by The Malt Store, Umbria Gourmet Pizzeria, Athlete PT, Noodles & Company of Eden Prairie, The Sun Current, the Tavern on 4 and 5. And in partnership with Minnesota Football Magazine, The Pioneer Press, and BEC TV. You can find an archived broadcast of tonight's game available 24-7 on PSBMN.com. <laughs>